Hello and welcome back to another podcast editing walkthrough. My name is SP and I'm from the GunnaGeek.com network. I'm also co-host of Better Podcasting, which is a podcast dedicated to help the hobby podcaster and just get better. I also host and produce a couple other shows, one of which is Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is a podcast on the general Marvel universe. And that's going to be important because that's what we're going to be using today. And I've been asked by multiple people on multiple different occasions throughout the multiple different years that I've been doing better podcasting, how I edit. So I went ahead and created these videos to show how I edit so that you can learn from them too. Now I stream these live on my Twitch stream, which you can find at twitch.tv slash Stargate Pioneer. I then upload these videos to my YouTube channel for a more permanent storage location. And that is Stargate Pioneer Edit Walkthroughs. Now I'll be editing using Vegas Movie Studio 15.0 Platinum and Audacity. The process is I do a video edit first. I then render a audio FLAC file from Movie Studio 15.0. I import that into Audacity and complete an audio edit. And you'll see why as we get there. Now this is a basic editing walkthrough. It's not necessarily a course or lessons. Just like a video game walkthrough, however, I will be giving explanations of how and why I'm editing as well as a little bit of my editing philosophy. In this video, I'll be editing Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. and spoiler alert, in this episode I will be discussing The Punisher, Season 1, Episode 6. So if you don't want to be spoiled on The Punisher, go ahead and skip this video or watch The Punisher, Episode 6, then come back and then watch this editing walkthrough. My status so far is I've uploaded all the tracks and I've started the editing process. I've gotten through the intro and now I'm into the main segment. I doubt I'll get through the entirety of the main segment tonight. I'll probably have to finish it off tomorrow and then we'll move on from there. Now, my editing philosophy is in the video edit, I'm mostly deconflicting the audio. I'm minimizing crosstalk. I'm taking out the audio ticks, removing coughs, sneezes, microphone hits, desk bangs, keyboard noises, that sort of stuff. I'm also trying to get rid of crutch words like the ums, like, so, you know, those sorts of things that I can take out and not be too noticeable to the video watcher on YouTube. The mouth will be moving and no sound will come out. That's kind of annoying if you ask me. But I do it because ultimately my primary product out of this whole thing is an audio edit. Now I'm prioritizing the content first of all. So if the content is bad, I take that out. As we did actually last episode, actually the content was hilarious, but that was for the outtakes. So that will go in by uh, post credit basically is the best way to say it. Post credit scene, post credit segment. And then my next prioritization is audio quality. I'm trying to make the audio as good as I can in post production. Now the best place to make quality, quality audio is right when you record it. In this case, we're past that stage and I'm just trying to make the best of what I've got, which is actually pretty good. So that's good. And then I'm considerate of my viewer or listener's time. So if I need to take stuff out, whether that's spacing or crutch words or content that's not good, I take that out and I leave them with the main purpose of the podcast, which in this case, have a little fun, but the primary purpose is to talk about a Marvel comic property that's on the small or large screen. Now in the video edit, I'm constrained a little bit of what I do because my focus is audio, but I only have one track of video, which means that if I want to edit the way I do an audio edit, I'm going to end up with a lot of jump cuts and I don't like that. So it does change the philosophy on how I edit and why I actually go through two different edits to get the optimal product for both. So if you actually have a question and you're viewing this live on Twitch, go ahead and throw it in the chat and I'll answer it along the way here. But if you're watching this later on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment down below and leave a time code of the YouTube video, not the video I'm editing, but the YouTube video. So I can scan forward to it and make sure I'm answering your question regarding what you are talking about. And also I am not a professionally trained audio engineer. I've just been able to pick up how to edit pretty well through my eight years of podcasting. So if you actually have a suggestion, how to do things better, whether that's an effect, a process, whatever, go ahead and leave it in the comment or catch me outside. Um, one of the many ways I'll give you at the end of the podcast to get in touch with me. And I will probably make that change if I can with the way I edit 
into the videos so I can share with the class and everybody can get better because of that. So with that, make a couple little changes here on screen and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my video editing thing. I'm up here. I'm in an unused ad media part of the program. It just seemed like a good place to put me in here. So you can see me live as I'm doing this whole thing over on that side of the screen. You see all the files that I've loaded in on these various tracks and then also the preview of the video. And then down here, I have a bunch of different tracks. I have the video track, which is just the one track. Then I have the audio track. I'm just going to make sure that this video track has the switches off. Yep. And it came with a audio track, but that's everything on one track. So I can't deconflict anything from that. And that was the OBS, a studio capture for everything. I recorded three tracks, which I mix minus using my Mackie Pro FX 16 V2, and then it goes into a Zoom H6 for recording. One of which is all the incoming audio. So the ladies in this case, my co-host on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is me, just me, only my microphone. And the other track that I record is the soundboard down here, which is just the sounds coming out of my soundboard. So the bumps, the intro and the outro, that sort of thing. So those are the three tracks that I record separately. The ladies in a multi-ander on their end do the same thing with a mix minus into their Zoom H5s. They're all using Zoom H5s in this case. So you've got Lauren's track, you've got Haley's track, and you've got Michelle's track. So that's the tracks. And then, oh, by the way, as I move along, I see those bumps and then I replace them because if you use a bump and you record it, it just degrades the audio after time. And I've got the original files, so just go ahead and replace them. Also, the soundboard makes an excellent progress bar because I delete up to the point where I've edited. And that is where we are going to begin. Hopefully, I will get a few minutes out of this, about 20 or so minutes. And then I'm going to have to go to bed tonight because I've got work in the morning. And it's the bane of podcasters to balance podcasting work with actual work that pays the bills so you can podcast. Anyway, here we go. Goat Lab, aka the Brigade Combat Team Trauma Training, which, if I'm remembering right, I'm not sure if it's still in use because I know there was a lot of controversy about it in recent years. But yes, this is a thing where they will sit. Right. You're paying attention to the output meter over there. And I'll redo this little segment again. And that is how I know that it is in this track. As I saw the output meter go up for that little bump. So let's take that out. No more bump. Where they will simulate battlefield injuries on goats. And. This is done while the animal's under anesthesia. And it's, let's not kid ourselves, it's terrible. But there's an article on the New York Times by Adam Linehan, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, called, A Goat Helped Me Save My Buddy and Others on the Battlefield. And talking about his experience as a uh, combat medic and about working on those goats. It's not called a Judas goat. They're working on anesthetized goats. And again, it's, it's a different thing. But, but that goat was not his goat. And... Can a Haley... Yeah, we'll do... If I click this button here at solo, so the only thing I hear is going to be tracks that are clicked with solo. Right, but that goat was not the Judas goat. So then I click that, which is the trim in, and that takes all that out. As a uh, combat medic 
and about working on those goats. It's not called a Judas goat. They're working on anesthetized goats. And again, it's, it's a different thing. Right, but that goat is goat. And again, it's, it's a different goat. And again, it's. Well, it's a little hit right before she says, and it's on her track. And again, it's. Wow, and it's so close to when she actually speaks. I don't know if I'm going to be able to take this out without degrading her audio. Again, it's it's a different thing. Nope. Might help if I took the solo off. It's like, why is Haley not talking? Well, she is. I just couldn't hear it because I basically muted her. Again, it's it's a different... But, but that goat was not the Judas goat. I think. Uh, but, but that goat. Thing. But that goat was not the Judas goat. I think uh, Billy is the Judas goat, right? I. I oh, got to get rid of the. Uh, uh, I think. Billy is the Judas goat, right? I, I yeah. I was actually equating. It's taking away the crosstalk, and I'm deleting Michelle because she picks it up again. She says I, and then I again, so I can delete that first I, and then still have her say I, and it works. Is the Judas goat, right? I yeah. I was actually equating it to that O'Connor guy. The guy that we find out later to that O'Connor to that O'Connor guy, the guy, the guy that we find out find out later, actually equating it to that O'Connor guy. The guy that we find out later in therapy who's just been faking being a Vietnam War vet, but, you know, all those stories about. Got some noisy co-hosts. I, yeah. I was actually equating it to that O'Connor guy, the guy that we find out later in therapy who's just been faking being a Vietnam War vet, but, you know, all those stories about Vietnam. And he's leading Lewis into this whole Second Amendment um, right fight. Just like to get rid of those ums. Into this whole Second Amendment right fight. And there they are on the court steps and the cop is telling them to go along. And O'Connor is just like, yeah, let's go. And Lewis is standing his ground. And then Lewis gets arrested and O'Connor just leaves. So O'Connor has led Lewis into this like state of thinking and into this like state of thinking. <clears throat> Thought I heard something from somebody else's track. Into this like state of thinking and abandons him and pays the price later on. I hadn't even put that together. That's, yeah. Well, that's definitely. He's the one who, yeah, is the kind of safe goat. Who, yeah, is the kind of safe. Aha. Was not coming from Lauren's track. Maybe it was mine. Nope. Haley's track. It's the price later on. I hadn't even put that together. That's, yeah. He's the one who, yeah, is the kind of safe goat. 
And then you have Lewis, who's betraying O'Connor, too, by killing him. I mean, that's... We all knew Lewis was going to snap at some point. And then you have Lewis, who's betraying O'Connor, too, by killing him. I mean, that's... We all knew Lewis was going to snap at some point in time. It was the gruesome violence in the episode, and we all knew what was going to happen. We just didn't know what kind of form it was going to take, and, and this is how... He snaps because he personally was betrayed. I think that is not done with. We're definitely going to see something more with Lewis, whether it's Frank or Billy or or uh, who's the guy that's there, that's running the, the veterans group? Curtis. Curtis. Curtis or Curtis or all three of them. I think they're going to get intertwined in that. As so the, in in when he does stab him, like when he first stabs him. As so the, in in when he does stab. Him, As the as so the, in in when he does stab him, like when he first stabs him, you're like, oh, that's terrible. It's like he was just a really bad situation, and his instincts took over, and like that's horrible. And then he stabs him like eight more times, and you're like, okay, well, that's kind of and murder. Not only does that, but he makes sure he breaks his neck too, or his spine. And that's yeah. ultimately what probably really killed him. I mean, he was going to bleed out with the knife wounds, but. Yeah. Lots of bad stuff going on in this episode. And you have some play with Dinah, too, with uh, Special Agent in Charge Madani. Because there's no way that she just slipped up and left that folder there for... No, she, she wanted him to do that. Right. So she was playing him. She wanted him to do that. Right. So she... Right. So she was She wanted him to do that. She wanted him to do that. Right. So she was playing him. So yeah. she's kind of betraying him, I guess, along the way. She was playing him. Yeah. She's kind of betraying him, I guess, along the way. Yeah, but well, if anybody deserves to be betrayed. Yeah, but it's almost like he knew. It's like, okay, yeah, you're using me to get to Frank. Okay. The question I have is at one point in time, did Agent Orange, I'll just call him that, I know he's got a real name, or supposed real name. I don't know name. his real name. I don't remember it. I just remember him as Agent yeah, Orange. Yeah, so... Agent Orange has Madani's office bugged, and so you don't know by her talking to Sam about things if that's how Agent Orange knew to get um, Russo on it, or if to get Russo on it, or if Russo and Agent Orange were in communications all this time, which I I assume they've been working together since Kandahar. Yeah, because here I'm which I I assume they've been working together since Kandahar. Yeah, because here's the thing. Anvil rose very quickly. I mean, Billy got that company together really quickly and having all these contracts with the government and such. You don't build that up that quickly and that successfully yeah. unless you have some contacts. Well, and a and lot yeah, of money, up, like if you had been selling heroin. From look Kandahar. up the history of Blackwater. Have some contacts. Well, in a lot of money, like if you had been selling heroin from Look Kandahar. up the history of Blackwater. Uh, there's some excellent podcasts about this. There's Behind the Bastards. There's The Dollop. There's just so many about Eric Prince and the rise of Blackwater. The main reason this guy was able to get it off the ground was he had the, contact, the contacts, but most importantly, he had the money. So that is assumed for us as far as Anvil and Billy Russo as to the fact that he's already working with Agent Orange or involved in the CIA for wet work. Well, we right we now. knew from Daredevil. Mm -hmm. 
the CIA for wet work. Right we now. knew from Daredevil that more than one person in Frank's unit had been involved in the heroin. Involved in the CIA for wet work. We knew from Daredevil that. We knew from Daredevil that more than one person in Frank's unit had been involved in the heroin trafficking. We just didn't know who else it might have been aside from the colonel. So it was apparently Billy was one of those guys. Apparently, but we didn't up to this point. We really haven't known. We haven't been shown anything to say yes. We're this is all assuming. This is all saying. Oh, of course, that's what it is now. There's also the fact that, again, if you have read any of the comics, you kind of know he's not a good guy. All right. If you have seen any of the previous Punisher movies and happen to remember character names, you know he's not a very good guy. Okay. So we're headed down this path. Question for you, ladies. How did Frank know not to take Billy up on his offer? Because he was absolutely trusting him. He didn't know not to take him up on his offer, but Frank has a mission right now. And that mission requires him to stay in New York. Because he was absolutely trusting him. He didn't know not to take him up on his offer, but Frank has a mission right now. And that mission requires him to stay in New York. I think it's the fact that, yeah, Frank is so single-minded. That's kind of his only saving grace right now. Yeah. Because if, if it was just Frank still working construction jobs or whatever, I think he would have taken him up on the offer. But the fact that he is kind of so dug in at this point. From what we've seen of Frank... He's not the type of person who would just leave something half done. I mean, look at it. He went back to uh, the Lieberman's place because he missed. He went back to uh, the. Went back to the Lieberman's place because he missed dinner a couple nights ago because he said he would. I think a little bit of that was what he was witnessing through the cameras and. That he knew she needed somebody to come in and and basically give her hope. There's also there's also that. But then he said, that's not like me. You know, I said I'd be here. And. And and basically. I almost caused it to freeze up and I would have lost a lot of time there because it would have gone back to where the audio save was so remember to save every about five minutes or so to come in and and basically give her hope there's also that but then he said that's not like me you know i said i'd be here and then i wasn't that's not like me well I mean, again he was frank dead. is very yeah but the whole thing is frank is very for all that He's in this world of a lot of blood and violence. Frank's a really simple guy. Everything we ever see of him in the flashbacks, everything like that, he likes his family. He likes music. You give him a job to do and he's going to do it. He's he's just, he's focused. He's just kind of simple, not like simple, not intelligent, but just simple. Here's the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. And then... When that's done, okay, it's over with. He's not somebody who likes to overly complicate things. And And everybody around him is just making everything more complicated, and you can see his frustration with it. I think that's why he, there's that frustration between him and Micro. Micro is somebody who lives in the details. Right, so he's a simple Marine, just tell him what to go shoot, and he likes to go shoot it. You know, bad guy, good guy, that sort of thing. That's kind of Frank's mentality. Although, talking about some good guy, that sort of thing, that's kind of Frank's mentality. Although, talking about some flashbacks, we got some weird drug-induced dream healing kind of dreams, and not really flashbacks to go shoot it. You know, bad guy, good guy, that sort of thing. That's kind of Frank's mentality although talk <laughs> I laughed because I thought I got rid of that bump and I did not it's kind of Frank's 
mentality. Although, talking about some flashbacks, we got some weird drug-induced dream healing kind of dreams, and not really flashbacks, of Thanksgiving with Frank. That was that was an odd one because he's with Micro's family and it's almost like they've known each other for a long time. And it just broke my heart when he's tied to the chair. And I know it's a dream. We all knew it was a dream. But gosh, his performance was just amazing because he's just begging the soldiers not to kill. But, you know, just like his other dreams and such, everybody gets Gunned down. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's that muddled state of, I'm not sure if it's so much a dream as it is. It's that combination of head trauma plus a fever dream, essentially. If you've ever been sick enough where you're hallucinating, you know you get some weird stuff in there. And And there's there's the fact that he's, we always see him with that same dream of his family being gunned down. And this is a get some weird stuff in there. And there's the, there's the fact that he's, we always see him with that same dream of his family being gunned down. And this is a mishmash of the past several days and his past few flashbacks and his usual nightmare. And it's, it's so sad. Anyone think it's a miracle that Frank's going to go ahead and wrap that up for this time i hit save and that was me editing the next i don't know five or ten minutes or so of legends of shield episode 262 on the punisher season one episode five next time i will get further into it who knows when i'll actually get all the way through i'll try to dedicate more time but i am Recording a uh, Gonna Geek show tomorrow night, so that will put a little hamper on my available schedule to editing. But once again, I am SP from Better Podcasting, part of the GunnaGeek.com network. And if you happen to have a question on anything that you've seen today, go ahead and leave a comment down below on YouTube. And once again, please make sure that you leave the time code of the YouTube video so that I can scan to it and know exactly what you're talking about. And if you want to reach to, out to me on Twitter, I'm at Stargate Pioneer. My email address is StargatePioneer at GunnaGeek.com. If you want to come join our live chat on geeky things as well as all things podcasting, you can catch our Discord server at GunnaGeek.com slash Discord. Thank you once again for watching. I sincerely appreciate that. And if you like to have more videos like this, go ahead and hit subscribe and like down below on YouTube. So that's it for this time. Until next time, I'm SP saying bye.